Today we are hunting here in Columbus, Georgia. I have a price on these bottles. I am willing to help you out. How much we, more? We're getting there. We're getting How far there. off are we? We got a couple of minutes. Today we are hunting here in Columbus, Georgia. Now technically, this is my home turf when it comes to bourbon hunting. A lot of the bottles I got to start my selection actually came out of Columbus. Pretty much all of them that didn't come from an Alabama uh, state allocated drop came from Columbus. But I've never really done a thorough bourbon hunting trip here. I've just had a few stores that I used to frequent when I had a lot of business and things to do over in Columbus. So we're gonna try a lot of new stores today. We reached out to folks on Discord. These were your suggestions in Columbus, Georgia. Let's see what we find. And the first stop is Cheers Beverage Shop, which I think I swung through this store not long after it opened. It is a brand new store. Not sure what we're gonna find. Like lots of times new stores don't have a ton of allocation because they haven't sold a bunch of whiskey, but you never do know. So let's give Cheers a try. Hey, how are you? Good to see these holidays getting more distribution. What is this? Doc Holiday. Never heard of this SP house. Barrel Strength Washington's Reserve. Distilled in Kentucky, bottled by Bardstown for SP House Spirits. I love these four gates, but mm, we just got some of these in the house, so I haven't tried those yet. Penelope Architect Store Pick. I'll be honest, this is the first time I've ever seen an Architect Store Pick. I'm not a French Oak Stave guy, but if you are, there you go. This is probably the Penelope I drink the most right here is this barrel strength. A lot of y'all want us to do something with Kings County. So let me know in the chat if you think we should do a Kings County pick. I've got a couple of their bottles. Of course, Calumet 15s are fantastic. Now this is allocation season and I typically during this time of year, I'm usually looking for harder to find stuff, but we did that in Austin. We really were looking for harder to find stuff there. So we'll, we'll do a mix here. If I find some distillery I've never heard of, that has something interesting, we're liable to pick it up. Fiddler Unison. We've definitely had some folks recommend that we do something with ASW. A lot of their more popular stuff, again, is kind of those oak stave finish things. So let me know if you've had an ASW that you really liked. I'm gonna leave this because I can get this just about any time being here in the area. Blue Note Uncut Unfiltered. They're on my list to reach out to for barrel picks next year for sure. Got some 13th Colonies down there on the bottom. Some Bowman Brothers Small Batch down there. Oh, so many to choose from. What do we get? Dude, you can't beat those benchmarks for 20 something dollars. You just can't do it. Send a lot of these Elijah Craig Toasteds these days. These were really hard to come by previously and now they're all over the place. That's B523. A lot of folks are saying the C batch is the, the batch to have this year. All of these are Bs. I don't normally buy those Elijah Craig batch proofs just because I have so many and nobody drinks them all. I will buy a C if I find it just based on how many people have talked about how much they like it. Mary Dalek Toasted Barrels. High Rye Mash Bill. Finished in Tequila Barrels. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody let me know about that Mary Dowling if you've had it. I'm a little torn about that. I don't usually, I mean, I'm not a big tequila guy, so tequila barrels doesn't sound like it might be the best thing for me. Might be wonderful, I don't know. What I'm really looking for is I'm looking for brands that are producing their own whiskey, people who are actually doing their own distillate. And I'll try some sore stuff if somebody says it's really good, but I'm trying to find more of these like farm to bottle or at least really good small distilleries. So let me know of any of these I passed, if you're aware, if they're making their own distillate, because it's really hard to tell sitting here on the shelf. That's why we got to get this app done. And we've made some progress on that. We've development actually starts next week from when I filmed this. We're gonna grab one of these Milam and Greens right here. Single barrel, there's a very small batch. There's a triple cask. I'm gonna go with this single barrel and see what it's about. Mile and Green, well, I mean, they were sourcing. I gotta look and see, because they, they were sourcing. I know they were sourcing for a while, and they, they this may be sourced, some, but yeah, I keep sourcing. seeing these, so I grabbed Let me it. see, because they, they were transitioning okay. into yeah. their own distillate. Right. Right, so that was, I like so many of the other ones that were doing it. I mean, hell, even Whistle Pig started like that. So they were slowly using less and less MGP. I didn't even look yeah, at that. this is their own. Yeah, yeah so this one, this, this one is theirs. Any uh, hidden gems in here I should have yeah. picked up? And I mean, not necessarily allocated stuff. I mean, allocated stuff's good, but not, well, doesn't have to be that, right? Allocated is an overused word. Yeah. Okay, half the store in here is allocated. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, we've got beer and juice that's allocated, but that doesn't mean anything anymore. I understand. You know? Uh, but I would say some hidden gems just as far as scarcity goes. We've got the only good times in retail right now. Tell me about good times. So good times is a group. Uh, it's the uh, the Bourbon Thieves is, a, is okay. the name of the yeah. group, and they they do uh, 
one-off cast finish MGP. Just kind of one-off releases. Um, they do a, a variety of, of interesting experimental things and cast finishes. We were able to get our hands on some of their Hawaiian honey barrels. That's an eight-year MGP cast drink single barrel. It's not, is it honey finished or they mean honey barrels as in the rare barrels? A aged, aged in Hawaiian honey cast. Okay. Yep. The Element series from Redline, they just released their Hive edition. That is, uh, it's been called the, the Rio Killer. It's a honey and amberana finish. Okay. Uh, MGP. I, I think my favorite honey cast finish I've ever had was Redline. This to me still uh, has a great bourbon profile. Obviously, our uh, store pick, Penelope Architect, is whittling down the last few bottles there. First time I've ever seen an Architect store pick. One of two in the state. I was fortunate enough to be able to get uh, get in early on those and get first pick. Shelf version is a blend of four mash bills with a um, blended French oak stay finish. Um, this is, again, deconstructed. This is just, just the 21% rye MGP mash bill. Six year with an intense French oak stay finish. Okay. So that is specific to that barrel. It's nice color, a lot of great tannin, a lot of baking spices, um, you know, nice viscosity. It's been one of the most unique barrels I've picked over the last 15 years or so. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Ben Holiday items have been really popular. I've been hand selling these a lot lately. I, I think that's my fault. Uh, We've those, been singing the praises of those for well, a while now. I, 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 I've been hand selling these to, you know, a few customers that wasn't familiar with these guys at all. And I have, you know, after trying them, was a believer. And, you know, at the end of the day, a six year bottled in bond, for under 60 bucks, if that, if that said Kentucky on it, it'd be twice that. A Ragged Branch as well, we got a standard pro of, of match bill and a weeded. Um, again, those were those were pretty impressive pours. Uh, one of my favorites, Green River. Uh, as you know, Green River has been making whiskey for a slew of other uh, uh, labels and brands for many years. Uh, previously, OZ Tyler. Um, but now, this year, they've officially released their own namesake bottles, um, and there's not a better uh, not a better traditional mash bill or weeded mash bill for that price point on the market right now. I don't. Th I think that weeded right there is going to be one of the best weeded's on the market when it gets more aged. Agree. Like it is so. It is, it is so good for that young it, it, right for, there. For, for, yeah. for, for, for its uh, for its age, it is one of the smoothest whiskeys in that in that you know in that age range for that price point that I've had in recent memory. Yeah. The Rye Three products I've been a big fan of, and the cigar. One of the best ryes I've had recently. Just some great unctuous notes, um, the nice nuttiness, uh, some great uh, date uh, notes, and uh, even fig from the uh, Madeira and rum cask, and then the Naranja just to kind of help round it out with some citrus notes. Um, that's a great pour right there. You sold me on it. I'm gonna have to. It's gonna kill my budget today. Yeah, I, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> these cigar blends and, and cigar batches are, are quite spendy just because you're dealing with multiple barrels yeah. and multiple casks. So there's a reason that, if, you know, that these things have the price point they do. It doesn't always make it any easier, but uh, you at least know, you know, that it's, uh, you know, there's some legitimacy to it. Paul Sutton, uh, this is a unique little project. Uh, they are distilling at Wilderness Trail. Okay. Um, I've always been a big fan of them after visiting them several times over the years. Wilderness Trail always does everything grain to glass. It's all state grown products, ingredients, all distilled, aged, and bottled right there on the same facility, which you don't see a whole lot anymore. So, is Sutton one of their brands, or is that so just a Sutton, brand that's having it Sutton, distilled there? Sutton is a new independent brand that's okay. just distilling there, which is uh, a, a good news because, again, uh, the, the equipment that Wilderness Trail has is some of the best in the business. For a six year Kentucky, for 65 bucks single barrel these days that's that's uh that's a pretty nice that's a pretty nice price point all right i'm gonna go ahead and grab this sutton here too while i'm at it might as well if, I'm, if you're gonna go broke you might as well go broke you know do it right i appreciate it thank you so before we get into our second stop i want to talk to you about a couple of things one got a little problem got too much freaking whiskey i keep buying these to try them because people want me to try this try that we're getting them sent in the mail it's a great problem i love the problem but we got to find a creative way to deal with all these bottles because i'm never going to drink them all and i don't want them to go bad i can't just give them away so let me know down in the comments we've got some kind of dumb ideas that might work might not work maybe a private club where we just drop all the bottles because they're not bad bottles i'm just drinking the top of the top when i'm at home drinking by myself and I've got all of these pretty good to, to really good bottles, I'm just never going to get to finishing. So y'all let me know what we should do with those down in the comments. And second, 
we read all the comments, good or bad, almost all the comments. Definitely for the first few days to a week, we read every one of them. And one of the negative complaints I get several times is that I ask somebody's recommendation in a liquor store and then I don't buy that bottle. You gotta understand, I'm asking their recommendation, one, for information, right? Like that's, it's good content. Like you get somebody else's opinion other than just mine, but also lots of times they recommend one either I know I don't like or I already own it or whatever, right? So we're not trying to diminish. I'm not gonna say, oh no, I don't like that. Or, oh, I've already got that one, right? Take the recommendation, move on. Oftentimes too, we've got a budget on these and we just spent half our budget for this video at the first store and we've got what four or five six more stores we're probably going to go to so we don't take every recommendation like sometimes if they really sell it we'll jump on one but we can't always take the recommendations but i still want it because if they do a really good job of selling it and i haven't had it like he did back there with that ry3 well then i'm going to buy the bottle like that's just how it goes but our next stop is one i've been into and one that has really done some damage to my budget. I've been in here a couple of times and they have, like every time I've been in here, they have weird stuff I can't find anywhere else. Huge selection, probably the largest gas station liquor store I've ever been into, and that's Maple Party Shop. Hello. Hey, how's it going? All right, sir, how you doing? Ah, not too bad. Got some Richland rum right there from right down the road. I need to get that bottle. Y'all like the rum so much, we wanna do more rum stuff. Richland rum's right down the freaking road, so we need to give that a try. Have you had this Richland rum? Oh, yeah. What do you think about it? Love it? Love it? Uh, like that's a love it bottle? It's between this this rum and this rum are my two favorite. Okay, uh, who makes that one? I, that looks no, like a Sazerac. I have no idea, but that's a Rock Hill yeah, Farms like bottle, Farms, so I'm yeah. assuming it's Sazerac. But this, I, I got a lot of guys off of bourbon that want to try rum. Yeah, it's a good entry. Yeah. I want to buy that bottle, but honestly, we're going to just get it from them. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna, we're going to do some stuff with them. Jimmy lives right across the road from me there. So yeah. What have we got in the whiskey jail over here? Yeah, these are too fancy for me. Scotches and such. Anything here I really need to try. Is there any like local hidden small distillery, anything you're really liking right now? Oh, of course. Well, I think they've started releasing their own is yeah. why it's gotten better. Yeah. Uh, their rise been top notch. We picked a barrel with them, so I bought quite a bit of their stuff over the last few weeks oh, or a few months. Right, yeah. yeah. Man, just got old Carter's just sitting out here for some fat guy to knock over. That is way too close to me not being able to see it. Dude, you got whiskey in every corner. Oh, yeah. We're, it's stuck everywhere. I would always say we're the, the best gas station liquor store going to see. I, that's <laughs> what I said. I said you're the largest <laughs> gas station liquor store I've ever seen. When it comes to bourbon, at least. Bourbon selection, we are the best gas station. Like, I don't know any other gas station liquor stores. I don't, like, okay. We've got a few I've never been to on my list today. So I may, who knows, I may go to another one. Uh, of course, we've got a couple barrel picks. Uh, we have Doc Swenson and Rebel. We also have a tequila pick. And then we've done a few uh, things with, like, Jay Manningly and Southern Collective. I have an Amaranta finish. I'm gonna sit this down so I don't have to, I got the feeling this could get out of hand. You'll put out some of your allocated we'll stuff, but then you have a reward system, you say? $40 Eagle Rare for those that can't, everybody tells me they can't find Eagle Rare. There it is in Georgia. Of course, Georgia has more Eagle Rare than anybody, it seems. If you pass it through doing any bourbon hunting in Georgia, look for Eagle Rare, cause it's out there. Or Four Gates apparently, Lord have mercy. That's what got me last time. I bought one of these Four Gates last time I was here. The one bottle I want to highlight. Okay. really highlight is this bottle here. Queen of Battle, that's Jay Mattingly. Jay Mattingly. This is my brainchild with the retired colonel. We give back to the infantry museum every bottle we sell. So okay. The queen of battle is the infantry, king of battle is artillery. Short barrel founder. Man, people don't, people are sleeping on those. Short barrel barrels. Oh yeah, we, we just did a barrel pick with them as well, but that, they gave me one of those founders reserves and it, like, it is so freaking good. I really like the Starlight VDN finish. That's we, my favorite Penelope. What's your price on that? I have no idea. Penelope is great at marketing. They didn't come out with Penelope Amberana. They came out with Penelope Rio. They didn't come out with VDN finish. They came out with Valencia. Like they're just better than y'all are at marketing. If you're wondering why Penelope's doing well and sold for like a bajillion dollars, it's because they're just better than y'all are at marketing. I'll take it. <sighs> running out of budget, two stores in, running out of budget. We're gonna do a fun little experiment here. He's gonna pick a bottle of whiskey I'm going to sign that bottle of whiskey. And the day this video drops, I'm gonna let him know. And he's gonna release the very, that very day, he's gonna put that bottle 
in his shop somewhere. And if somebody shows up and finds the signed bottle, you have to buy the signed bottle, but then what do you get? Something from the back room. There's Weller Antique 107 back there. There's some E.H. Taylor back there. There's some higher end stuff than that back there. So you get to you get to buy that bottle and then you get to walk into the back room and pick something from the allocation list. But this will be a fun thing. We're not gonna tell you what bottle it is. It will be a bottle of bourbon, but I'm gonna sign it. I'm gonna sign it with this marker. Look for a purple autograph on the back of a bottle. I'm gonna sign TJ and Bruzel, so you're sure it's me. And uh, let me know if you want. Do you realize what you're asking for? You're asking for people to come in here and destroy the store and just move every bottle. Yeah, it'll be in front center. It'll be in the front of whatever it'll aisle it's on. Group, it'll be within the group. Okay. I'm not gonna hide it in the tequila section. And, or put it in the back of a row or anything like that. It'll be the, the, you can't miss it, it'll be on the front. Let's, let's make it crazy. All right, so we're standing over there having a conversation and I see this. Do you know what this is? No. I want to say it's just regular fireball and blue bottle. It's darker in color, it seems, or it could just be a thicker bottle. Fireball Dragnum. I thought for a second it was barrel aged fireball. It may still be. Y'all let me know if that is. I'm probably going to pass on it because I still have the keg of fireball. I don't need more fireball. What's up, man? How's it going? All right. TJ. Justin was in it. Nice to meet you, Justin. all the time. Well, I appreciate it, man. So you into bourbon? Oh, yeah. What's your favorite? Something Buffalo Trace related. Okay. Okay, five, you know, 23 or whatever. I hear the C's really good. I haven't had it. Haven't had it yeah, yet. I've been looking for it. They, everybody here has the B batches here in town. Yep. Just at the bottle shop. And they, yeah. Same thing. Yep. Down here, though, what's the store right down the road here? Up Cheers. Cheers. Just had the B's. You're now been too. Right? Yeah, I've been Opelika. Okay, cool. What about yourself? Birmingham. Okay, so you didn't come here just to bourbon hunt? No, no, I came, I've come down to play for work sometimes. Okay. While I'm here, stop anywhere I can. So, what are you doing the rest of the afternoon? You want to go with me? We got on bourbon hunting date now? Sure. I'm two stores out. I got to go to the bottle shop. Okay. So you you, you might double up a little right. bit, oh, yeah. but I still got probably at least four stores to go to if you want to if you yeah. want to go on a bourbon hunting date. Let's do it. He's the first person to say yes. <laughs> it's usually very awkward, and usually I get weird looks, and everybody just says no. I do have some bottles over here I got to buy real quick, though, and then we'll hit the road. You ready for me? I'm ready for you. That Richland rum and that Valencia right there. What have you found at Buffalo Trace? Yeah. And then, yeah, Eagle Rare 40 bucks is a buy. If I didn't have several bottles of it already, I would I would be a buy on that. I appreciate it. So we're supposed to be meeting our new bourbon hunting date here at the bottle shop to continue this excursion. You've already been here. Been here. What bottle did you buy? Anything? Buffalo Trace. You bought a Buffalo Trace. Yep. So let's see if clout makes any difference, right? Can we leverage that clout to do better than a Buffalo Trace? Is there any unicorn bottle you're particularly looking for today? I want to find that sea bass, but... So Elijah Craig C batch. But, uh, anything you recommend? I'm interested to hear your, your feedback on bottles that are in here. Let's go see what we find in the bottle shop. All right, so we, we start off by looking behind the counter over there. Yep. Uh, so they got some barrel stuff, some redemption, little short barrel stuff. Lots of times here they keep the really really good stuff in the back. Okay. Right. So you gotta gotta know somebody. But they have a great selection just out in general. Have you had the holiday stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay, hey, like we're big fans of this Ben Holiday, especially the soft, both of those, but the soft red weed in particular. And we just did a barrel pick with them. Like they're, first of all, great people, a lot of fun, okay. really good whiskey. Ooh, see, I've never seen this. I can't even pronounce it. If I can't pronounce it, that's usually a good sign. <laughs> Kuiper spelt? Kuiper, yeah. Kuiper? Yeah. Somebody one in the comments the, right now two. is letting me know what that's supposed to be. You ever, have you ever had the single barrel uh, Old Forester uh, barrel flesh? You talking about the single barrel barrel proofs barrel or the proof, hundred yeah. proof? Yeah, those are those are great. I tend to like the hundred proofs better, just because there's more complexity. But you know, somebody who likes proof, it's weird to say. But I, I love the barrel strengths, but the hundred proofs are really good as well. What's going on, man? What's How you going doing? On, TJ? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. We're just trying to find some decent bourbon. You got any? Have you tried any of the stuff? From these guys. I literally was just looking at this one and then was about to read that one when you walked by. What I do you think? To, I want to say they're out of Chambly, Georgia, Doc Brown. I've tried them. They're both very good. Um, this is an interesting one. It's named after the Kuiper belt. Okay. Uh, so Kuiper it, is how you pronounce it? Yes. I got um, it on the second try. They use space age distilling techniques. Oh, Lord. So what does I, that mean? They put it in a shuttle? It did not. Okay. Uh, but it's six or seven year old heaven golf. You got the James Pepper decanter, cask strength, really great palate, a uh, little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of chocolate, 
really great bottle. I bought a pepper, didn't love it, but I don't know what I got. So if he likes Buffalo Tray stuff, almost all he's had, what am I recommending for him? The Breckenridge stuff to me drinks a little sweet. Big fan of all of their stuff. We've got a store pick with them. Three years old, smells like cinnamon. Big fan of the Paul Sutton stuff too. Have you picked up one of the Paul Suttons? I was I don't think I bought one. I was just talking to a guy about one today and I don't think I bought it. I think I bought the RY3 he was recommending instead. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this Sutton here too while I'm at it. Might as well, if, I'm, if you're gonna go broke, you might as well go broke, you know? Do it right. So the story goes, Paul Sutton's wife's grandfather was a whiskey maker and they found a bottle when they were cleaning out his house. They sent it to Wilderness Trail who reverse engineered the mash bill within like 99.5% or something and then distilled it for them. I want to know how they reverse engineer a mash bill. Wilderness Trail, hit me up. I'd like to learn. I want to bring you some whiskey. I want you to reverse engineer the mash bill. Have you had uh, Blue Note Jew Joint uncut unfiltered? So those, like let's see what the price, 50 bucks? Honestly, for a craft whiskey, really hard to get a craft whiskey at cash strength for less than $50. Like it's just nuts for the price. So I definitely recommend you try one of those if you haven't. You're not selling it fast enough if you gotta dust it. Oh no, dust just settles on it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stopping it. Every one of you checked every one of them to make sure they're bees. We only got one case of the C's, so that's kinda all we have right now. Ah, uh, so the C's are gone? You had them, sold them? Okay. Appreciate it, man. Oh, oh, oh. This was awkward, that's weird. Appreciate it. He went in for the fist bump, I went in for the handshake. I can't look at the microphone and the camera and hands at the same time, apparently. I just can't do it, Captain. Oh, we got the bookers out. Which batch? Back two batches, it looks like. 04, 03. Oh, three and four. There you yeah. go. I just, I don't know. I've got a bunch of bookers and I just don't buy every one of them. So we can move on to the next place. You see, you're buying and you save me. So my budget now, my budget's helped out because he bought bottles and I didn't have to. The voice always gives me away. I'll be doing stuff around the house. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. TJ. Mike. Mike, nice to meet you, Mike. All right, Crazy Cecil's. Everybody wants to say hey. Who, who have you got who wants to say hey? My buddy Bo. What's up, Bo? How are you doing? Well, I appreciate it, man. Our Colorado hunt's about to come out. You're going to be mad at me. We need to come back out that way. We didn't do, like we just caught some of the mountain towns. Like I didn't do a proper, like, you know, Denver, Colorado kind of hunt. So I'm sure we'll be back out there. Got a party in here. Ooh. I want, but not that bad. Uh, yeah, you might look behind. I've seen a lot of toasted barrel here lately. Every store I've stopped at had that just about. Do you like, do you like these or? Barrel pro I, like I like them, I just never loved them. I've never had one that I'm like, that's bad. Yeah. You're liable to find some dusties in here mm -hmm. that have just been sitting around because, I mean, you gotta have like permission to even come back here. It's all sorts of Garrison Brothers stuck back here. Like that's 2018 Garrison Brothers right there. I don't know if it's a real autograph or it's printed on the bottle, but this is Hand Handle White, corn harvested in 2012. Distilled in 2013, released in 2018. I mean, not 50 years old, but right. a little bit of a dusty there. 2014 single barrel Garrison Brothers right there. Like how long, what, when did they open? You like Garrison Brothers stuff? I like the Garrison Brothers stuff, but I gotta be in the mood for it. Like it's not something I'm just gonna go drink a bunch of, but every once in a while, it's a good change of pace. It's very intense though. What are you doing? I, I have a little YouTube channel where we just hunt bourbon. Uh, McKenna 10's a good bottle. When I first started buying whiskey, that was what, a $30 bottle? It won a bunch of awards and it went up to like 40 and then it got impossible to find and you couldn't get it anywhere and it disappeared for a while. And then it came back at like 67, I think that's a little high, 50, $60 now I see them for. Looks like they keep most of the good bottles up here toward the front. Four year, like that's the only, yeah, that's the only reasonable price I've seen on something that, of course, those used to be hard to find, and now they're everywhere. Uh, so the Widow Jane has a lot of George Dickel in it, and a lot of people are not fan of that George Dickel flavor. And so some batches I have, it's really mild, and, and you know, the, the Dickel kind of minerality, and some, it's too much. Yeah, it's not this one, but 
Nature's Nature ride. It's like your favorite. The barrel strength ride. Okay. I mean, you may have one hiding back here somewhere. That's why your friend's gonna be mad at me. Yeah. Because I bought two cases of it in Colorado. No way. Yeah. You're tempted, aren't you? Not for that much. <laughs> you like Rock Hill Farms? One of my favorites. Yeah. That was one of those bottles, one of those early bottles I got on that I just absolutely love. That's that's that and Antique 107. I was like, okay, I like bourbon. I didn't, I wasn't sure. I was like, I kind of like bourbon. I hit Rock Hill Farms. I hit Antique 107, and I'm like, okay, I'm a bourbon guy. I'd love to have those two bottles. I would buy those two bottles if that were the price for both of them, yep. not for one of them. I did buy one the other day in Austin. I bought a bunch of whiskey. And so I, I think basically what I ended up doing was giving like 150 for a Weller Antique, which is more than I like to pay. But I gave 250 for the Rock Hill Farms and then I bought a couple of Van Winkles at full secondary. I need them for, I need them for an event, before you give me hate, I needed them for an, it's not my money, that was that was corporate budget. How you all doing? Good, how about yourself? Hey, TJ. Nice to meet you, Mr. TJ, yes sir. Is this your store? Yeah. Are you crazy, Cecil? I'm one of them crazy. <laughs> this is one of my favorite bottles on the planet. That's a good story. And this gentleman right here really wants one of those. Okay, okay. What's oh, your best price on that? Okay, so we and, and, and I'm willing to buy more bottles if we yes, find yes, more, yes, right? So come on, let me show you like a couple boxes and then tell okay. you have an idea what's coming out. Okay. So what's your, like, do you have any of that old rip? Uh, 2022 is gone, but okay. 2023 can be November for sure. Anytime. Yeah, just so not here yet. Yeah. This week we have a tax saving. I doubt it anything going to drop in. But before Christmas, 100%. Okay. Every year we've been able to get lucky on that. We have Pappy. We got some um, um, Eagle Air 17. William Lulu every year. Eagle Air 17 every year. And Pappy so far every year. We are known by the Weller and Buffalo Press product like Blanton. Eagle Air. And every case Eagle Air you buy, you get the ball for free. Every case Blanton you buy, you get the Blanton for free. At what price are you selling them for, by the case? So it's going to drop to like probably $150 bottle. Okay. Well, I appreciate you bringing us back here. I yeah, appreciate you, please. Sir. No problem. All right, let's go. Let's go talk numbers over here. See if we can come to terms. I have a price on these bottles that are like, if I find it for that price, I buy it. On a Stag Junior, it's 150 bucks, and on a Rock Hill Farms, it's 250. 400 dollars for the pair, which is still way above MSRP. You're not very far away. I can willing to help you out, but you gotta come up a little more. How much we, more? We're getting there. We're getting How far there. off are we? We we're not far away. If you buy four more bottles, doesn't matter. It's 20 dollars or 400 dollars buy. I don't care. As long as you have four more bottles, which is going to make a six, I'll drop it down from 150 to 199 and 250 to 299. You have a deal. I, I mean, smile. I don't know if it's a deal. I don't know if it's a deal now. Yeah, I I, I, the smile was maybe you calling it a deal. I want to get this man a Stag Junior, yes, right? He's never had one. Let's meet in the middle. I'll buy four more bottles. I'll find four more bottles. Yeah. Do 175, 275. I can do probably 175 on that one. The Rocky Palm, there's no way I can do less than 299. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else you got. I mean, that's you. you, you you're go. trying to make me do four more bottles let me make sure there's four more bottles i want i don't i'm not i'm not sure we're gonna do it i'm not i'm not sure we're gonna do it at that price i don't know if there's four more bottles in here i won't though that's the problem right especially not like all of them are kind of elevated if all of them were msrp and the problem is, is i just bought a rock hill farm so i don't really need it mm -hmm. i mean i want it i don't really need it probably should buy that garrison brothers yeah but again god knows what the price is gonna be at this point after negotiating like i just hate to not buy something right i hate to not buy them Release number one short barrel? Is this a first release short barrel? Release number one from short barrel. That's cool. I just bought an entire barrel of that though. I got a bunch of it. I don't even know if that's the toasted. Is that just a bourbon? Yeah, that's just a bourbon. Uh, it depends on the barrel. So we estimate when we're just kind of planning about 200 ish, and it really ranges from you know 180 to 220 typically. All right, let's renegotiate. Come on, we gotta we gotta work this out. I don't think I can find four other that I want to buy. Okay. So what can I do on just the stag? I'm gonna buy this man a stag right here. I'll take 199 on the stag alone. You sure? No problem. No problem. Yeah, that's no problem, man. I got. I do like Rock Hill Farms. I just don't want to buy four other bottles. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank now you, you got a stag. Sir. That's awesome. All right, so you, you got your first stag. You paid. Awesome. I paid too much for it. You yeah. got a good deal. I, on the other hand, did not get a good deal on a stag, but now you got one. So you got to let me know what you think. First time you never had it, right? Never had it. Okay. So now you get to go and try it. I don't know what batch it is. So give me the give me the proof on it. We didn't even look. 22A. 
132 proof. Oh, they put the batch on them now. So these are the new ones, right? With the batch on it. 132.2 proof. I've never had that one. Give it a try. Let me know what you think, man. Absolutely. All right. Well, I appreciate you hunting with me. Hey, thank you. Yes, sir. It was nice Great. meeting you. Great to meet you. All right. So we've got uh, another store or two we're going to go to. I'm tired, man. That, that, the, oof, that, the really loud environment in there. And then the negotiation was exhausting. But I'm going to hit a couple more stores. We'll see what we find in Columbus. I'll catch up with y'all then. All right. Next stop, Wild Bill's Party Shop. And this was all the way on the other side of Columbus. I need a freaking Red Bull or something. I tell you what, this has been a long day of bourbon hunting. I think we're about five hours in today with the travel over here to Columbus. And I'm beat. Trying to eat a little better and, you know, apparently the diet doesn't give me the energy I need to do some bourbon hunting. But let's, uh, I've never been to Wild Bill, so we're going to see what this is all about. $40 special reserve, $40 Eagle Rares, single barrel, barrel proof rye back there for a hundred bucks. Historic barrel entry. Ooh, here we go. Now we got some hard to find stuff, yeah. Honestly, so far the markups I've seen have not been that high, but then a lot of these don't have prices on them. Uh, I mean, I'm interested in any of that Weller, including the William LaRue and that Russell's 13. Rock Hill Farms. What about your William LaRue? 17. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, so like the Eagle Rare is not too bad of a markup. Little markup on the Special Reserve, and then the rest of that stuff was like above secondary price or at, at or above secondary price. I'm too tired to even negotiate at this point. You know, I think we're going to call it here. Overall, a pretty successful hunt in Columbus. Had a good time. Got a, got a bourbon date. That's the first one of those we've been able to score. We're just roaming in and to places and randomly asking people if they want to go bourbon hunting with us. First person to take us up on it. So we got him a stag junior feel good about that or stag don't call me junior overall had a good time here in columbus hit most of the shops i usually hit there were a couple more i wanted to go to but i wasn't able to uh just i don't know just running out of time so time to head home see if we can't find some dinner maybe jill got something cooking something good so when this hits don't forget to uh check out maple party shop that bottle should be dropped somewhere out there and he's going to give you access to some of his allocated stuff. He didn't say there was any limit on it. I don't know what allocated stuff he'll have left by then, but he's going to take you into the closet and let you pick an allocated bottle if you find the signed bottle. And I think people who watch the channel a lot, there are clues as to which bottles I would sign, but there's one sitting there. I signed it right on the front label. It's not going to be that hard. So rush over there. Let me know. Folks at Maple Party Shop are a lot of fun. I'm sure we'll be doing some stuff with them in the future. He was kind to ask if I would sign a bottle. Wouldn't be bad to have some more local bottle shops that are doing some events and things that we could participate and have a good time in as well. Hopefully this video turned out pretty good. It was a long one. At least it took a long time to shoot it. We'll see if the video is a long one, but uh, we'll catch up with y'all in the next one. This video is being brought to you by absolutely nobody. I know what you're thinking. Why don't you have a sponsor for this video? Well, let me tell you, we try to have sponsors, especially on the bourbon hunting videos, because they're pretty expensive to make. Lots of footage to edit. I'm buying bottles of whiskey. Like there are just lots of things that sponsors help cover the cost of, but sponsors are really freaking frustrating. There's a ton of back and forth and negotiation and you got to send them the freaking ad and then they've got to approve it. And today's sponsor, guess what? Hasn't approved the ad. The video is late because we have been trying to get approval on the ad. So we don't have a sponsor for this video. So the team said, why don't we just promote our own stuff? And we've got these cool shirts, like these bourbon hunter shirts right here, the horse collector shirts. We got leather patch hats, of course, Glen Cairns with bruisal on them. But realistically, we have to sell a hundred shirts to generate the same amount of revenue we do by just doing an ad for a sponsor. And I just told them there's absolutely no freaking way that people are gonna go to bruzel.com and buy a hundred of these off this one video. So there's not a sponsor for this one. I appreciate y'all watching regardless. And if you want some of that stuff, check out bruzel.com, help us with our bourbon budget.